I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm here with Jim Cavale, CEO and founder of Influencer. You guys are right in, the, right in the middle of athlete content. It seems like right now there's no better time for an athlete to get their voice out directly to fans, have, build that sort of one-to-one -one relationship. How have you seen this space sort of explode you know, alongside the company's growth? Well, I think you've seen it explode in a lot of ways, even down to the roles that exist with every team, league, and even media company right now that didn't exist three or five years ago. Um, creative director, content creation roles, just for specific teams at all levels, division one, two, three, pro sports, all exist now. And it's because the athletes have channels of their own now because of social media. People don't follow brands on social to the degree that they follow people. That's why we're on socials, to follow the lives of our fellow human beings. And athletes are people that people out in the world want to get in on the background of their life and understand who they are and what they're about and keep up with. But athletes aren't content creators. And so, um, you know, some of them would argue that they are, but they're um, not the majority. And I think it's proven when you see a guy with 30 million followers posting a Getty watermarked image that he stole from Google. And so to be in the middle of all that and empower athletes in real time with an automated gallery of content that they can use and share to tell their story on social is really why we exist and what we're so passionate about. And the timing is prime because of everything I just mentioned. Sure, I'm sure that leverages a lot of opportunities for brands for partners, to be partners of these athletes, to really sort of activate against them in a way that goes beyond just you know, the shoe they wear on the field or the drink maybe that's in the back of their locker room or something like that, to have an opportunity to, to be part of that you know, authentic conversation they create with fans. It is, but it's tricky and it hasn't been figured out yet. At least that's, that's my opinion. So um, when I was walking over here, I saw one of our athlete users who went from the college level, he played quarterback for an SEC school and now he's a pro and just got drafted in the NFL draft, do uh, really the first big advertising post I've seen him do with Old Spice. And to see that and see all the reactions, mainly from teammates and former teammates, kind of laughing at him and see how it's still not working like the brands would want it to on social because we're on social for real, authentic posts. And when we start to feel like we're being sold, we, we change the dynamic of how our eyes and brain are viewing a feed. And so I think brands are gonna continue to get more organically involved with athletes, um, product placement still, um, maybe watermarking content, and less in your face with a true ad, true commercial basically, because that has been proven that it doesn't work as well on social. Sure. Um, this post I saw was actually very well done, and I think it will work but it, it, it's, it was done so well because it seemed like it had to do a lot with his life. He's about to get married and wow, he's you know, doing something with Old Spice as an activation with his wedding, yeah. which gets into his story. So, but I think that there's still an art and not a science when it comes to brands being involved with these athletes inside of their posts and, and feeds on social. You mentioned a couple of these pitfalls that some athletes kind of find themselves in, whether that's using bad imagery or, or just <laughs> coming across two brands. I mean, what do you sort of, what things, things do you see work really well? What are some tenets of really good engagement from, from a brand or a team or a property that, that you think more others, others should leverage as well? Well, from the team level, I think uh, you've got to be able to talk about your losses, not just your wins. Teams who only post and create content for their athletes around wins, um, unless they're Duke, <laughs> they're they're not gonna they're gonna you know 40 percent or 30 percent or maybe 60 percent of their seasons not going to be documented and people want the whole story they want the rising action the falling action the conflict fans want all of it and so I think it starts with the team having that mentality and I I thought that Kentucky basketball did a great job uh, at the beginning of the 2018-19 season this past year they played Duke in the opening game it was a very very highly hyped matchup Nobody knew anything yet about Zion and RJ and Barrett and Cam Reddish as far as how well they were going to do. But top three recruits go to Duke. Kentucky had a highly touted class as well. They had what ended up being three first round draft picks. Two of them were lottery on their team. They face off and Duke just, just murders them, right? They win by almost 40 points. And I loved how Kentucky reacted to that on social. 
they basically had a theme of, hey, we, we weren't expecting that. Big Blue Nation, we know you weren't either. Um, we got punched in the mouth, but we're gonna get up and we're gonna work. And throughout the next month, it was shaky to start the season. They had a tough loss to Seton Hall right here in the city. Um, but they kept telling the story around the wins and the losses and the, you know, that went well, but this didn't. And the players did the same thing. And when they started to hit their stride, it became that much more special. And I think that, that that's the best route from team to athlete that can be taken on social is the whole story. Just like the literature formula I just went through. You know, there's the exposition, here's who we are. There's the rising action and climax and conflict. And then there's the resolution. And if you can apply literature, which seems so basic and even trivial, but apply that to sports, even though there's no script, have that formula, people will engage with your team and your athletes. You know, growing up in an era now where you know, kids are having phones in their hands, kind of out of the womb for better or worse, and getting used to social media and Instagram, being on Twitter through most of their lives, do you find that young athletes today at the college level are willing to work with a property like yours and, and, and hand over, not hand over some tools, but have someone come in and, and help them out on things or do they want to own their own platforms to a certain degree? So yes, that's my answer to it. So, uh, so, so they, they definitely want a platform that's gonna give them their content in real time. I think all athletes want that. Even an older athlete that's not on social um, would tell you that if they could have their whole career on their phone for when they're older, they would take it. Um, but, but so yes to the first one. Um, now, if we took over their social and the team or some officials um, took over their social and actually did what many agents now do for pro athletes, the younger athlete is not as willing to give up their social. 25 year old athlete is more likely to get a marketing agent to post for them than a 20 year old athlete. Only a five year difference, but because of the basic native aspect of them growing up with social yeah. versus more of an immigrant aspect for the 25 year old who started using social in their teens, very different. Um, with the second question, which was more about um, you know, whether or not they, they are more likely to use the tool and tell their story in a certain way and, and be apt to, to participate on social. Um, once again, it's just so different age group wise. They are hungry to grow their brands. Um, I don't speak too often anymore because it's not scalable, but twice a month I still go visit a new client and it's an extra feature they can uh, make as a part of our partnership. And so those two talks, I just did one to Kentucky football and I think before that I was with Penn State football. Mm -hmm. There'll be a line after the talk of kids who want to talk one-on-one -on -one about their social. They're hungry for it. They want to build something that um, I think we're seeing is actually making them money before they get to the pro level. Yeah.